Hey everybody, Alonzo here with GolfCoastSmoke.com and today we're making cheesesteak pinwheels. You might be asking what cheesesteak pinwheels are and about an hour and a half ago I had no idea either, but I went to Moody's Meat Market in Corpus Christi, Texas and I talked to Charlie, one of the owners, and I said, Charlie, I gotta cook something different. I've been cooking briskets, I've been doing pork butts, I've been doing ribs. I need something that's gonna wow the people that are coming over today. He thought about it for a second, asked me, do you want pork, chicken, beef? And I said, let's go with beef. So he recommended that we get a spinalis and then we can turn it into whatever we wanted from there. So I was lucky enough to get this nice looking spinalis from him. They got a whole ribeye roast and he butterflied the spinalis off of it and then butterflied it a little bit more so I can stuff it with something or we could turn it into some beautiful spinalis steaks. The first thing we're going to do is work with our vegetables. We want to slice these up. Then we're going to put them on the griddle. We're going to get them nice and tender before we put them inside of our pinwheel. Now that all of our vegetables are sliced up, let's head right out to the griddle. Now we're outside at the Weber kettle and let me tell you exactly how I got this set up to saute these vegetables. I got a full chimney of lump charcoal. We got it all the way hot and then we poured it over some unlit charcoal. We've got a void right in the middle of our Weber kettle and on both sides we've got those hot coals. We're going to put our cast iron right in the middle. We don't want the heat directly under it so it gets too hot but that's where we're going to saute our vegetables and then that's going to be where we put our steaks in just a little bit. And about five to seven minutes is all we need on these vegetables. We want them to be tender, but we don't want them to be overcooked because when we wrap them in the spinalis, they're gonna continue cooking for a few minutes after that. So now that we have our vegetables sauteed, we're inside and we wanna show you this spinalis that we got from our butcher. So if you don't know what the spinalis is, I put up a picture of this ribeye right here. It's also known as the ribeye cap and the most tender part of the steak. So what my butcher did was he got a whole ribeye roast and he actually butterflied the spinalis off of the ribeye and then butterflied it again in order to get me a thinner piece of ribeye so I can stuff it and we can roll this into pinwheels. The first thing we're going to do to get our pinwheels ready is we're going to hit it with a good beef seasoning. I'm going to be using Swine Lives Prime Beef today because it has a really great umami kick and this is going to be kind of like a few bites, right? So when you're eating this, you're going to get a few bites and then you're going to be done with your pinwheel and I want that umami flavor to hit you right when you bite it. Next, I have some jalapeno jack cheese that we're gonna lay down. You'll notice earlier that I said these are cheesesteak pinwheels. I did not say Philly cheesesteak pinwheels. So you guys can put any types of cheese and ingredients that you want. These are the exact ones that we wanted today. After that, I'm gonna lay down some provolone. And last but not least, our beautiful vegetables that we sauteed on our cast iron out there. And now we're just gonna roll. And this is exactly what you wanna see once you're done rolling out your pinwheel. If you want to, you can use butcher's twine on this. You can pin it, you can do it however you want. Today, we're gonna use some pins in order to secure it and make sure that it doesn't fall apart when we put it on our Weber kettle. We'll do one pin here, another here, if you see any gaps in here, just try and close them with your pin or with your butcher's twine. And now we're just gonna cut right between our pins. Now that we have our pinwheels assembled, let's go ahead and re-season the outside with that prime beef. We wanna make sure we get as much flavor on these as we can and make sure to hit every single side. We're out at the Weber kettle now and we're just gonna put our steaks right in the middle. We'll flip these continuously until they're cooked exactly the way we want them. We want to cook it to around 130 degrees, exactly the way we'd eat a ribeye steak.
Our cheesesteak pinwheels are finally done about 15 minutes later. And I'll tell you what, the smell from here is absolutely outrageous. When I was cooking them on the Weber kettle, I have some friends over and they were saying, dude, those smell unreal. I cannot wait to try them. So let's get right into this. Let's cut one of these up and then we're going to talk to you about how it tastes. This one right here is calling my name. Just going to cut it right down the middle. And that's what that's looking like. A perfect medium rare. You see the peppers, you see the cheese, you see the onions. Now it's time for us to take a bite. That is sincerely from the bottom of my heart and soul. One of the most delicious bites I've ever had in my entire life. You get that great spinalis, so juicy, so tender. I get a lot of that umami kick from that prime beef. You have to try the prime beef. I'll put a link down below where you can buy that from Mark's website. It tastes outrageous. The cheeses, the provolone, the jalapeno jack, the peppers, the onions. This is something that you have to try out. Don't be afraid to go talk to your butcher and ask them if they can source that spinalis for you. Tell them you want to do some pinwheels. Tell them you want it out of a full ribeye roast and you can too make this in your backyard and oh my gosh is this insane i can't stop smiling i feel like i'm over smiling right now because i'm so happy with how delicious this was i'm gonna go outside and enjoy this with my family and friends and as always i really appreciate you guys tuning into this video thanks and we'll see you on the next one, one two, oh my three. gosh it smells so good it's okay. actually pretty thick too yeah Mmm. Mmm. Peppers and onions are amazing. I love them. <laughs> right? Onion. Dude, they're so good. They tr That turned out delicious, yeah? Delicious. Mmm. Good? Mm. Tell me that's not a 10 out of 10. 11 out of 10. Tender. Seasoning is amazing. The peppers. I call it the Texas Trinity. Bell pepper, jalapeno, onion. <laughs> it's a fajita taco without the tortilla. There you go. It's really good. Love to see it.